Good day, good day everybody and once again we are back together and today we are going to be looking at the Mpumalanga prelim exam for 2024. So if you have not subscribed, please just make sure that you do the right thing. Just hit that subscribe button. Right, and we are going to get right into it. And of course, if you need any assistance in maths and science, you're more than welcome to get in touch with us. Our team is really ready to help you. And um, you can get all the details that you need on the description of this video. All right, now let's get right into it. Question one. Right, so we start with question one. So the first question that we are given there for 1.1.1, 1 .1 .1, we've got x plus three and two minus x, which will be equal to zero. We need not waste time with this. We know that x is equal to three, or in this case, remember, uh, we've got two minus x is equal to zero. So, We'll take the x to the other side. So x will be equal to 2. Right, so we don't need to waste time with that one, right? Uh, let's go into 1.1.2. Okay, so they say to us, we've got 2x squared plus 3x minus 7 is equal to 0. That looks like a typical situation where we are going to use the quadratic formula. And remember, they said when necessary, we must round off our answer correct to two decimal places. So I'm going to find uh, x is equals to minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2 times our a value. So let's substitute there. We've got negative a uh, negative uh, uh, 3, that is, okay, um, that's plus minus the square root of our b value is positive 3 squared minus 4 times our a is 2 and our c value is negative 7. And all of this is divided by 2 times a, which is 2, all right? And we are just simply going to substitute um, or rather use our calculator. Okay, so... We've got, uh, there we've got a fraction that's negative 3, that's plus the square root of uh, 3 squared. Right, now note you've got a negative times a positive times a negative, would be, which becomes a positive, right? So that's 4 times 2 times 7, okay? Uh, you can put those negatives there. And this is divided by 4, which is 2 times 2. Okay, so my first answer is 1.27. Or if I make that sign negative before the square root, I get an answer of negative 2.7. Right, negative 2.77. Right, and that's how we get to our answer there. Right, as we go on to the next one. Okay, so now for 1.1.3, we've got an exponent there, right? An exponential equation. So we've got 2 point, um, or rather 2 to the exponent x. Okay, let's write this properly. Minus 8 equal to 2 um, and 2 raised to the exponent x over 2. Right, so let's do this, ladies and gents. Let's say, now this is the lower exponent, right? Uh, x over 2 is the lower one. So let's say let x, or rather let, let 2 to the power x over 2, right, equal to k. Now remember, it means that 2 to the power x will therefore be k squared. Why? Because that's the same as saying 2 to the power x over 2 raised to the exponent 2. So that's squared. So that will give us 2 to the power x. Right? So that's minus 8 minus 2 to the power uh, 2 times uh, rather, which is equal to 
uh, 2 to the power 2x over 2. Now note, ladies and gents, that becomes k squared, right, minus 8 equal to 2k, right? And we can factorize this. So that's let's first put it in standard quadratic form. That's k squared minus 2k minus 8 is equal to 0, right? And if we factorize, we're going to have k minus 4 and k uh, plus 2, okay, which is equal to 0. So which means that k is equal to 4 or k is equal to negative 2. Now remember, in this case, which means this answer here would not be applicable. Why? In this case, because you cannot have a um, you you cannot have an exponent, right, giving you a negative answer. You cannot have an exponential expression giving you a negative solution, right? So we we know that k, uh, so which means two to the exponent x over two, will be equal to. Remember, 4 is 2 squared, right? So the bases are the same. We can drop down the, uh, the exponents. So that means x over 2 is simply equal to 2. And so therefore, x is equal to 4. If we cross multiply there, x is equal to 4. I hope that made sense, ladies and gents. Right, uh, the trick is in knowing how to you know, just make that x over 2 equal to k. All right. Now let's go to 1.1.4. 1. 1, uh, That's an inequality, right? Okay, let's just make some space quickly. Right. So we've got 1.1.4. 1. 1. So they've got 7x squared plus 18x minus 9 being greater than 0. All right, so we need to somewhat um, make a plan or in terms of uh, factorization here. Um, it is really up to you. Uh, so I'm going to try and find those factors of 7 and 9. So if I say factors of 7 are 7 and 1 and factors of uh, 9, okay, let's try 3 and 3 first and let's see if that works out. So if I say 7 times 3, that gives me 21. If I say 1 times 3, that gives me 3, right? And definitely 21 minus 3 does give me 18, right? So that would mean this is my first bracket and there's nothing wrong if you decided to use the quadratic formula, right? So my first bracket would be 7x and 3 and the next bracket is x and 3, right? And this is equal to 0. Now, ladies and gents, what we need to do is just ensure that the bigger product must be positive, right? And so that will become negative. Okay, right. And that is how the cookie crumbles on this, right? So that means now your critical values are going to be x is negative or rather uh, 3 over 7 and the other one at negative 3. Right, so we're going to have uh, our critical values at negative 3 and 3 over 7, right? So remember, this becomes plus, that's minus, that's plus, right? So we want where the solution is greater than 0. So that means in this case, we are looking at uh, this portion here and it's going to be excluded all the way to negative infinity. And of course, it's positive from 3 over 7 all the way to infinity. So our solution there will be x is an element of uh, negative infinity to negative 3. And remember, we exclude it, okay, as well as 3 over 7 to infinity. Okay, nothing wrong if you decided to write it as x is less than negative 3 or x is greater than 3 over 7. Right, and that's how the cookie crumbles, ladies and gents. And of course, some of you would have preferred to use the quadratic formula there. All right, nothing wrong with that. Okay, 
right so let's go to the next question now let's look at 1.2 uh, which is the simultaneous equation right so they've given us the 4x uh, 4y rather uh, minus x is equal to 4 right and uh, we also have x y is equal to 8 now ladies and gents I'm gonna call that equation 1 and call that equation 2 now what I'm going to do is let's just make uh, from one of them let's make uh, one the subject of the formula right so I'm gonna take from equation 1 so from equation 1 I'm going to make x the subject of the formula so that means if I take the x to the other side that becomes positive x I'm bringing the 4 over so that means x is equal to 4y minus 4 right so let's make that equation 3 so I'm going to substitute equation 3 into equation 1 um, into equation 2 rather uh, apologies you cannot substitute it back into the equation it's derived from right so which means everywhere I see x in equation 1 and equation 2 I am going to put 4y minus 4 so we've got x times y so which means we've got 4y minus 4 multiplied by the y there and this is equal to 8 okay let's try to solve this so we've got 4y squared minus 4y, okay, bringing the 8 over to the other side, that becomes minus 8. Okay, so we can actually solve this a little bit further. Okay, if I divide everything by 2, uh, by 4 rather, so we've got y squared minus y, and this is minus 2. Okay, so this is equal to 0. And if we, uh, we factorize, rather, um, so that would be y and y, and that would be 2 and 1, so we know that this would be negative and that would be positive. So y is equal to 2 or y is equal to negative 1. Now that we've got the values for y, let's find the values for x. We did say that uh, now we're going to substitute um for y is equal to 2 and y is negative 1 in equation 3 right so we're saying that's x is 4 times 2 minus 4 so 4 times 2 that is 8 minus 4 will give us 4 or if we say minus 1, so that would be 4 times negative 1. So x is equal to um, 4 times negative 1 minus 4. And this is uh, equal to, so that's minus 4 minus 4. And that will give us negative 8. Right, so we've got the values for x and y. We've solved them simultaneously. All right, ladies and gents, and now we're going to move on uh, to the next question. So, for 1.2.2, uh, they say to us, write down both lines of symmetry for the graph of y, uh, xy is equal to 8. So, I want you to please remember, ladies and gents, so what type of a function is x, y is equal to 8? That would be a hyperbola, right? Now, we can rewrite uh, that hyperbola as y is equal to 8 over x. So what does that mean? It means that uh, the asymptotes, the vertical and the horizontal asymptote, would be at x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0 as well, right? Now, ladies and gents, please, I want you to remember, when we're looking at uh, the hyperbola, we know that the axes of symmetry 
are always at y is equals to x plus k1 or y is negative x plus k2. But remember, we already know that it passes through the origin, right? So which means in this case, both k1 and k2 would be zero. So that means our axis of symmetry would both be equal to y is equal to x or y is equal to minus x. Those are the two axes of symmetry. Right, so if you don't understand that, please go and watch our video on functions. Right, very important, particularly the hyperbola. Right, now let's go to the next question, which is 1.3. They say we've got uh, the solution of a quadratic function, or uh, equation rather, uh, given x is equal to that entire thing that is given there. They say for which values of uh, k will the equation, right, now let's check, have non-real roots. Now please note, ladies and gents, when would roots be non-real? When what is inside the square root is negative, right? Remember, we can't get the square root of a negative number. So which means for any values where 36 minus 4k is less than 0, right? So let's try and solve. So that would be negative 4k is less than negative 36 right on the other side so we divide both sides by negative 4 now remember once you divide by negative uh, the inequality changes sign so that means k should be greater than now remember this is 36 right divided by 4 and that should give us a uh, 9 okay so k must be any value that is greater than 9 uh, for any value that's greater than 9, we will have non-real roots, right? And they say, um, when will the roots be undefined, okay? Now, notice, in this case, for us to have an undefined value of x, the denominator must be actually equal to 0, right? So... Uh, for 1.3.2, we know that it means 2k must be equal to 0. So for any value where k is equal to 0, uh, our solution will be undefined. All right. So and that is how the cookie crumbles. Ladies and gents, you would have earned yourself a good 25 marks there. Let's go into question two.